Hello guys, in this video we'll learn input output instructions, which are an important group of ArsLogix 5000 instructions. First, we'll see, how a message instruction can be used, to connect two controllers together. After that, I'll explain get and set system value instructions, and use GSV instruction to see my controller scan cycle time. Then, we'll see what the immediate output instruction is. Finally, in the next video, we'll define and do a practical project to learn these instructions. My name is Syed Reza, and before we get started with today's video, I just wanted to inform you about all the great content, I have been releasing on the PLC Goods YouTube channel, which includes industrial automation PLC programming, HMI and microcontroller based developments. If you enjoy this video, I would appreciate it if you could click the subscribe button as well as the notification bell to receive the latest and the greatest content, I will be posting through the channel. Alright, let's start with the message instruction. If you remember, we have written a program to turn on 8 cabinet fans in the previous video. This input output module was used to get signals from door limit switches, temperature sensors, and start push buttons. Also, the module is used to turn on 8 fans. We used a virtual PLC station, but in real conditions, we will need to connect 32 equipment to the digital input output module by wiring. Now, suppose there is another controller that must connect to temperature sensors, limit switches, or push buttons. What we have to do? A very bad solution is using another digital input module, and connect equipment by wiring. Another way is to connect the second controller to the first controller, and request its digital input status. In this way, we won't need to rewire equipment again. Note that, two controllers must be connected together. Industrial processes usually use an Ethernet network. But, if you don't have any real processors, don't worry. In this video, we're going to do that using virtual controllers which can be created using ArsLogix Emulate 5000 software. In this video, I will insert another controller into this virtual chassis, and then, I will show you how these two inserted controllers can exchange data between themselves. Alright, here you can see the ArsLink software. It connects my computer to this virtual PLC station, which has been created using ArsLogix Emulate 5000 software. As you see, this virtual chassis has a virtual controller and input-output module. This hardware was configured in ArsLogix 5000 software. Also, this the PLC program, which has been written in the previous video to turn on 8 cabinet fans. Now, let me insert another controller into the virtual chassis. Note that, I explained how a virtual controller or input-output module can be inserted into the virtual chassis, in first videos of this tutorial. Here, I select version 20 for the new controller. This controller will connect to the first controller via the virtual chassis. Now, I right click on ArsLogix 5000 software icon in my taskbar window and click here, to write an appropriate program for the second controller. First, I select my controller type. ArsLogix Emulate 5000 controller. Then, I select the revision number which has been selected for the second controller. Here I write second controller as the name of the new controller. Finally, its slot number must be determined. Well, here you can see the second controller, which has been installed in slot number 8. Now, I must determine the first controller type and its slot number.
All right, the first controller has been defined. Similarly, we can define and use the input output module, as in previous videos, but in this video, we don't need to define it, because we will connect it via the first controller. Well, at the beginning of this video, I showed you the first controller program, which was written in the previous video. Now, let's write a program for the second controller. Now, select input output instructions, and insert a message instruction. This instruction, asynchronously reads or writes a data, to another module like a CPU, on a network. First, a tag must be created. As you see, its data type is message. This is a type of data, which includes a lot of parameters, like counter or timer data types, which have been explained before. Note that, this tag cannot be created under the main program folder. It can be created, only in the controller tags table. Well, the tag has been created in the controller tags table, and you can see its parameters. Let's learn how to use the message instruction. Click here to open the message configuration window. Under the message type menu, there are several items to make a connection, between a Logix 5000 controller and another controller type. In this video, we have two Ars Logix Emulate 5000 controllers. So, these message types, CIP data table read, and CIP data table write, can be used. Now, I select CIP data table read, to get data from the first controller. Similarly, I can select CIP data table write, to send data. Here, I must select the tag from the first controller, which I need in the second controller program. Let's go to the first controller program. Here, I can select any tag or address, which has been defined in the controller tags table. Well, the first controller is connected to an input output module. Let's copy its digital input address, which has been defined in the controller tags table. I pass the selected address here. Then, I must determine, where this data must be saved in the second controller. Here, I can select an appropriate tag in the second controller, or click here to create a new tag, to save the received data from the first controller. Let me write a description for the new tag. Until now, I have selected the source tag in the first controller, and defined the destination tag in the second controller. Now, in the communication tab, I must select the first controller. Now, if I activate this message instruction, it will read the selected address of the first controller, and saved on a tag inside the second controller. Here, I use the enable bit of the inserted message instruction. It makes to enable the message instruction automatically. Now, let me use a compare instruction in the second rung. I want to compare the saved parameter in the second controller, with zero. If I activate a digital input address of the first controller, then the received value won't be zero, and the alarm tag will change to one. Alright, let's download this program to the second controller. Well, let me change the second controller mode to run mode. As you can see, 
In the first rung, the message instruction is activating automatically, and if I activate any digital input of the first controller, the alarm tag in the second controller will change to 1. Let me open the second controller tags table. As you see, I can use any digital input of the first controller, inside the second controller. Remember, the second controller is not connected directly to any input-output module. It can use the input-output module data, using the first controller. Alright, let me click on input-output again. After the message instructions, there are GSV and SSV instructions. Get system value, and set system value. These instructions get and set controller system data that is stored in objects. When the SSV is enabled, it sets the specified attribute with data from the source. When the GSV instruction is enabled, it retrieves the specified information and places it in the destination. Note that, there is no status file, as in the PLC5 and Micrologix 1500 processors. So, these instructions can be used to access to controller system data. For example, let me use the GSV instruction to see the scan cycle time of my processor. As you know, the scan cycle is the cycle of which the PLC gathers the inputs, runs your PLC program and then updates the outputs. This will take some amount of time often measured in milliseconds. First, I must select the name of object class, like controller, module, routine, but the scan cycle time is related to task. Note that, all program folders are placed under the tasks folder. Then, I select the main task, which the program has been written there. Here, I can select some data about the main task. For example the last scan time, max or min scan time. I select the last scan time. This parameter is a number in milliseconds. Then I must determine, where this number must be saved. So, I define a new tag. Alright, here is an error in rung number 2. I'm in online mode. Let me exit from this mode, and define a new tag again. Now, let me download this program to my virtual controller, the second one. Well, let me change the controller mode to run mode. Now, we can see the last scan time of the controller program in millisecond. Similarly, we can use GSV instruction to see and use other controller system data, or use the SSV instruction to change some controller system data. Note that, for the SSV instruction, the software displays only those data you can change. The next instruction is IoT, immediate output. This instruction immediately updates the specified output data, like outputs of a digital or analog output module. The second controller don't have any output module. So, let me insert the IoT instruction inside the first controller program. As you know, after each scan cycle, PLCs update all outputs automatically. But if the scan cycle time is long, this instruction can update outputs immediately. 
Note that, this instruction update all outputs of a selected module. Also, usually try to write a suitable program to have a short scan cycle time, instead of using the IoT. This instruction usually are used for special and important outputs, which must be updated as soon as possible. Naturally, I don't need to use this instruction, because my programs are short, for example, if you remember, the scan time of the second controller program was about 150 milliseconds. It means less than 0.2 seconds. Alright, we've reached the end of this video. In the next video, we'll do a project to learn these input output instructions. Thanks for watching my content. If you have any question on this topic, make sure you leave them in the comment section below. And if you can spend a few seconds of your time liking as well as sharing this video, if you enjoyed it, that will mean a lot to me. If you have any suggestions for the channel such as what kind of hardware or software I should be covering, then make sure to leave that in the comment section. See you next time. Bye bye.